think it's something that we need to continue to pound on in the heartland. And here's the economic story behind that. Kansas is losing $1.4 million a day. $1.4 million a day in federal funds available to pay for the health care services for uninsured Kansans who qualify for Medicaid. Missouri, $4.9 million a day. Those resources, which are being spent to try and prop up hospitals and pay for unintended care, could be diverted to spend on education and economic development in both those states. That's why this is an economically stupid policy. 100% of the cost of those uninsured would be paid for by the federal government, and not taking it means that state resources are being drained. Our health needs and services should not be a side issue. They've got to be the main issue. They've got to be on the main stage. This is about the future of the United States of America. So I just want to tell you the work that you do every day is important, but roll up your sleeves, because 2016 is a very big year. We have to identify and mobilize millennials. We have to work to get people information that they want and need about the real facts and what's going on. And we have to make sure our voices are heard in, in spite of very daunting odds. Well, you just saw murders occurring in Colorado Springs inside a Planned Parenthood facility. I think that's terror. I think it's very um, debilitating, demeaning, and often frightening for women to try and access health care services when people are shrieking at them and screaming at them every day. As well-intentioned as those protesters may be, it makes a visit to a doctor's office very difficult. There are battles going on across this country trying to restrict access of women to reproductive health services. and. Uh, because the president has been willing to stop progressive measures at the national level, state legislators have become kind of the battlefront. And that Missouri and Kansas are at the heart of that, um, that both are states uh, that have not yet expanded Medicaid, which hurts a lot of low-income women who would have access to health services, but also regressive laws that make a choice of providers more difficult, that um, try to limit the number of clinics available, and we're likely to see that increasing in 2016. I think the good news is that millennials are on the horizon. They are now the largest uh, block of Americans. They can be the largest voting block of Americans, one out of seven people, and this is about them and their health care and their future, so I'm hoping we actually get millennials mobilized, activated, and engaged in the 2016 elections.